it's just so cool to see these guys and see them using all aspects of the habitat that I created for them. This is my favorite way to see turtles. I love to see the animals use all their muscles. They get enriched. It's really cool when you provide habitat, you let the animals behave naturally. And to be perfectly honest, it really cuts down on all the work that I have to do. We're trying to give these animals a good representation of their native lands. Now this is what I call a New Year feast. The Sulcatas are enjoying some collard greens as is everybody else here at the camp uh, that eats vegetation, that is. Happy New Year, guys. What's going on? Ken in here. Just thought we'd uh, visit with you today. I hope you had a fantastic and safe New Year celebration. Uh, we're gonna wander around the camp. I wanna just catch up with some of the animals, show you guys what's going on. Beautiful day here, 81 degrees. We got a bit of a breeze, but um, you know, I ain't complaining. Uh, don't worry, this isn't gonna be a long diatribe about weather. We have been uh, getting a lot of it this year, but how about some radiated tortoises? They're chowing down on some of those collards as well. I kind of came out, like once a week, I like to throw the collards out. Sometimes I'll do romaine. Uh, spring mix, a lot of different produce to get these guys uh, just a, a nice variety in their diet. They're always nibbling on weeds. They're eating a lot of different vegetation that pops up out of the ground here, plus our pellets uh, and our prepared foods from Fluker. And uh, it's been really good, man. These guys are doing extremely well. And there's another one way over there kind of chowing down as well. Um, I wanted to just kind of do a little bit of a follow through in this video. Uh, showing you some of the Vietnamese pond turtles and some of the turtles that we got here recently. We have gotten a lot of cool species of turtles and I kind of wanted to just hang out and talk a little bit more about some of them. There is Emidura subligosa hiding right there. Can you guys see? They're a little shy. This one is a little bit shy. I've also got some heaters in the pond. They're not turned on right now because uh, luckily the weather has warmed up. Let's check our skimmer and see if anybody uh, got caught in it. Does not appear to be any guys in there, so that's very good. But I, uh, I'm really interested. Hey, look at this. It's always cool, huh? When you're walking around and you find turtles kind of in the water on land. And that's one of my favorite things about the front ecosystem we have here is you'll find some of these Ambonensis or these Malayan box turtles, or they're also called the... Um, Asian box turtle, you'll find them utilizing all kinds of habitats. One was just kind of walking around over there. Another one was eating some collards right here. Okay. And one still is hanging out by the crocodile skull and just wandering around in the aquascape ecosystem waterfall. Uh, it's just so cool to see these guys and see them using all aspects of the habitat that I created for them. Um, this is my favorite way to see turtles. I'm sure you guys love this too. And it's taken me a lifetime so that I could grow up and get this house and really begin to do what I want. Now, isn't that awesome how well this animal negotiates these rock waterfalls? Watch this. This last one's gonna be a doozy. <laughs> but I think that's really, really cool. Um, I love to see the animals use uh, all their muscles. They get enriched. This is what nature is. Nature is a bunch of different tests. So I just wanted to show you guys what's going on. And as I'm sitting here, I also notice underneath this little tussock of grass, we've got yet another Malaysian box turtle hanging out. How cool, huh? So there are turtles everywhere in this habitat. Let's find another species. I keep seeing all of the uh, Ambonensis, all of these Malaysian box turtles. I keep seeing them everywhere. Look at this. I gotta be careful not to step in the biofalls, but we'll drop down in here and we'll see yet another one. So these guys are all doing very well. And this is where you can find them. They're really interesting turtles because they do use a number of different habitats. They're not necessarily um, stuck to just land or just water. They really are an animal that love both. And in the past, when um, I was kind of growing up in the late 80s and 90s, um, pet stores would have them and because they had the word box turtle, 
it led the people at the pet store to think, oh, it's a box turtle like our North American box turtles, which like to live on land. It was a huge mistake because those animals really do need water. They in fact live and are found in rice paddies. And so the rice paddies are flooded. So they are more aquatic than not, but here they're able to do what they want. And so they choose what they want. We give them the clean water that Aquascape has uh, created through their biofalls. Here's a uh, Caliger borneensis, which is kind of hiding out. I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll get some Fluker buffet blend here. I really like this stuff because it's um, got a little bit of everything for the aquatic tortoises, uh, turtles rather. I'm not in Australia. Sometimes they call their freshwater turtles tortoises. Um, and it's so funny, in, uh, in England you might call it a tortoise, but here in the North America we call tortoises land-based animals. And uh, turtles are our aquatic animals and terrapins are the animals that live in brackish water. Uh, very cool. So you notice it's got shrimp, some mealworms, and then of course the prepared diet. So what's neat is even though I'm throwing this stuff in the water, you think, uh, these guys probably aren't going to be able to know it's over there. Well. They, their olfactory um, organs work in the water too. So let's throw some right here and see if we can lure them out. Uh, in the meantime, just enjoy this bubbling brook that our friends at Aquascape created. So the turtles will get lured out. They have a good sense of smell. Um, there are musk turtles in here and I think, oh, nope, that's not a musk turtle head. Up oh, there is our little Caliger. Watch this gonna pop right out you see that they just smell it they have such a good sense of smell and they get right to work there's two Caliger under there oh by the way guys I'm saying Caliger that's the old term it's actually Badiger borneensis all three of them happen to be in this pond and they love hiding under that log which is also my favorite kind of feature of this pond I love the way the water kind of pours off the rock and off of that log as well creates a really cool micro habitat for these guys to feel secure and safe. It's one of the things you want to do with your turtles. You want to give them a lot of little places where they can hide. And speaking of hiding, I want to show you something that um, in the last couple of weeks of having this species, I've noticed about them. I'm talking about the Vietnamese pond turtle. So when you say Vietnamese pond turtle, you would think, where would you think you'd find it, right? You think you'd be finding that animal in the pond. But here's what's neat about them. A little bit of behavior. So again, we give the animals the choice. If they want to use the water, they've got it. But oh, there's another Asian pond turtle there hiding out. Okay, they're doing well, clearly. But if we come over here, I think we're going to see where the bulk of our little... Oh, there's another Asian. Ah, here we go. Look at this, guys. Two large adults, adult males, right here, of our Vietnamese pond turtle, and then some juveniles. One, two, three juvies are kind of hiding out right here. Isn't that awesome? So these guys I've noticed love to hide on land. Let's pull out one of these males, these adults, and have a look. And then we'll put them back. I was really interested in talking to them with you guys, uh, showing you them really like these now they're also called vietnamese leaf turtles okay which is interesting and it kind of makes sense because here they are hanging out in the leaves uh in the leaves rather and you can also see just kind of a flattened carapace this guy's got a little bit of deformity right here you can see kind of this uh this what they call the vertebral vertebral scutes this one's kind of crooked so this guy's got a little little kink in his shell but they are pretty. The other thing I noticed about them is for an aquatic species, it's kind of interesting, right? They have a concave shell. Now, what does this tell me? When I look at this, this tells me that this animal does spend a fair bit of time on land. Otherwise, it wouldn't need a concave plastron to mount females. In the water, you just don't need that. They grip on with their claws. But this species spends a lot of time on land, as I've noticed, just having it here. Um, it's really kind of cool to see. They charge around land. They are crepuscular. So they're coming out at dawn and dusk. They'll bask for a little while and then they get moving around, which is pretty neat. So I like watching them and I like seeing and learning these new behaviors with the new species that I collect or provide homes for here at Camp Kennan. Now these guys did come from Zoo Miami 
and they are actually belonging to the Turtle Survival Alliance, which is a fantastic organization I belong to for many, many years. It was created in 2001 when there was a huge confiscation of Asian turtles, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Asian turtles out of Miami. So they band together, created the Turtle Survival Alliance, and now they're doing fantastic work with some turtles that you may have heard of that are actually living in this enclosure also. Hey, where are you going? Uh, the radiated tortoises. Um, they've been doing, whoa, whoa, let me get down. Low ceiling, whoa, whoa, whoa. Holy smokes. Anyway, uh, really cool stuff. So they've been doing a lot of uh, help because lately, in the last few years, there's been a lot of smuggling of radiated tortoises, which has been a problem. And I just read that today, with the new year, uh, they found and seized even more smuggled animals. So if you can go to turtlesurvival.org, send them whatever you can. Uh, they'll help those radiated turtles and let them know that Camp Cannon sent you uh, and that you know the Camp Cannon army is in full effect and that we want to help these turtles that are in Madagascar. They have to now be kept at different TSA holding facilities across that country. Uh, they can't just be re-released because we don't know where the animals came from. We don't want to spread disease. So the TSA has got to manage these animals in captivity. And until Madagascar gets a stable government that will prosecute smugglers, uh, these turtles are going to be in deep, deep trouble. So there is our Badiger borneensis, not Caliger borneensis. That's the old name I was using earlier. I don't know if you guys can see it, but no, you aren't going to be able to see it. It's a Reeves turtle. She's down at the bottom. I was kind of hoping we'd find one of our little musk turtles because it's kind of cool to see them. I happen to know where one's hiding. Again, this is something you wouldn't have thought. It's a little interesting behavior. So they've got all this water, right? Well, we've had some cool temps. It's been cold. And because I have eagle eyes and I'm always looking and wondering what's going on with my animals, Look at this. How about it? There is a shell. And this is where one of the musk turtles decided it was going to hide. It was going to hide right in here. Now, I don't know which end is which. Let's see. Let's see which end is which. Come here. I don't want to get bit because they will bite you. They do have a pretty snappy little mouth. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the front end right there. So there is the shell. And the head, I don't want to, oh, look, look, two of them. Look at this. There's two that decided to kind of cohabitate and estivate right here, or hibernate or brewmate. Uh, it's been a little cool the last few weeks, and they've decided they want to hang out in here. So this is really neat. How cool is that, everybody? So we've got two um, Stereotypus salvanae, giant Mexican musk turtles. Um, they're just hanging out in the mud. And you'll find that this sand and this soil is nice and moist. So they're kind of down in there. They're in insulated from any cool weather, but they're hiding out in there. Look at this. Hey guys, will you come out and say hello? Is that a head? There's a head. Oh my gosh. It's a, how can that be comfortable? Oh my gosh, look at that. Push your head in. Let me see you. I just want you guys, there you go. There's his head. How cool is that, huh? Very, very amazing. So I'm shocked. I only thought there was one in here, but it looks like it was a cool little spot. So another one joined this one. Awesome job. Loving it. So what I'll do now is gently, I'm going to go ahead and just gently, here, look out. I'm going to push this back, push this back. Oh, just like that. And those guys seem to be super happy with their little situation. Again, it's really cool when you provide habitat, you let the animals behave naturally. And to be perfectly honest, it really cuts down on all the work that I have to do. The work, guys, is setting up these ecosystems. Once the animals are in them, they know what to do. As long as it's tailored for the species that you have, you're going to cut down on the amount of drama you have to deal with. It's going to be just so awesome. So it's a really cool long-term plan or a goal if you're interested in working with these animals to really create these natural habitats. Now, I know I've gotten lucky, but even before I met the great people at Aquascape, hold on, look at Darwin. This is like 
so funny darwin is never up here it's so funny i like to feed them up on this so i can get her exercising so i'm really excited i'll get back to her in a second i want to finish my thought and thanks for the guys at aquascape they've really been able to help me achieve the goal of really getting these animals just some amazing habitats now speaking of habitats and what we're trying to accomplish with these captive raised animals and captive animals like the galapagos tortoise and aldabra tortoise is we're trying to give these animals a good representation of their their native lands so here's darwin and she's been caught red faced or collard greened with uh things hanging out of her mouth some greens hanging out of her mouth but she's way up top here and the reason we built this water bowl which has emptied itself i got to check on the ball valve um, the reason we created it like this was for this reason, to give mostly the Galapagos tortoises exercise because these animals come from volcanic uh, islands and they've got to travel great distances over rocky terrain. Really, in some cases, some of the islands have really inhospitable terrain and these animals will walk over all these rocks and they get one heck of a workout. Look at Darwin as she goes down. So Darwin, when she came to me, uh, had what would be considered poor posture for Galapagos tortoise. Now, some of you have been following along for a long time. I've heard me talk about this before. Um, some of you may be new to the channel, in which case, welcome. This is Darwin, and Darwin is a Galapagos tortoise, and these tortoises need exercise to kind of get these back legs to work properly. If they're not, and they're raised in captivity here in the United States without the proper exercise, they'll develop poor posture and those back legs splay out backwards. Uh, they aren't able to lift themselves all the way up. Now look at uh, my Aldabra tortoise. This is Nostradamus. Now watch this. Nostradamus has these fantastic back legs. Look at how perfect. Right underneath them like columns. That's what these Galapagos tortoises are supposed to look like also. These are what we call elephantine hind legs. You see that? We were talking about differences between turtles and tortoises before. Turtles are gonna have webbed feet. They're gonna be able to go in water and they're, they live a semi-aquatic lifestyle. So they can come out on land and walk around if they have to. Whereas our tortoises got these big elephantine feet, column-like legs. And what's going on? Are you trying to get to some food that fell underneath Nostradamus? Look at Socrates. Watch out, you're gonna get your head stuck on. Um, so what happens with Galapagos tortoises in captivity, if they don't have the proper um, you know, beginnings when they're young, and this one did not either, you'll notice that it's a little bit more difficult for them to get their legs 100% underneath them. And the way we correct this is by creating uneven terrain in their enclosure and we first read about this and uh, the first uh, person that discovered this was my friend colette adams from the gladys porter zoo uh, she wrote a whole paper on it and i read that paper even before i met colette and i created this water bowl because hey they'd have to climb up and over into this to get water and they also have to climb up to it in order for them to eat their food so pretty stoked on that it's a good time awesome really really good stuff and here comes darwin now and you'll notice there's a little white little sudsy stuff in that left eye that's not a problem that's just her naturally cleaning out her eyes she can't really uh use her hands to wipe away because she doesn't have hands so she just develops the little suds and that's what just kind of pushes any of the dust and dirt any gack that gets in her eyes it kind of collects and just gets shed out right there in the form of this little viscous liquid now this actually uh when i said viscous liquid i made a mistake if you see pussy stuff from their eye that's sign of an infection and that's something that's going to need the treatment of a vet but when you see these little clear suds or even just uh clear tears that's okay all right it's it's like a viscous uh thick pussy stuff that's no good that means there's a some kind of eye infection so you're going to want to have that checked out because you may need to put some kind of ointment on them or perhaps even give them uh some kind of uh you know uh shots with antibiotics i love coming out here and hanging with you folks again i hope you had a great new year i think we're going to shut her down right now 
I think I'm gonna get back inside and enjoy some family. But for now, uh, why don't you guys do me a favor, like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos, if you're learning about the tortoises, that's what we're all about here. We wanna teach people about reptiles, uh, find more people passionate about them, and just give you guys a really good resource uh, here on YouTube. And we are now in our seventh year and we couldn't be happier, both Tom and myself. Just wanted to say to you guys, I hope you had a fantastic new year. Happy new year. We look forward to seeing more of you this coming year, 2021. Let's get it done. And uh, let's continue our goal of helping others, helping these animals. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.